no, we don't like that, we like that, we don't like that. Yeah, it's gonna walk really stupid. Talking about the monster, you've been in the monster verse since the beginning, and this time there are some legendary ones like Godzilla and some new titans. Which one was your biggest challenge? Definitely the um, star nose mole uh, pangolin creature. We we had like a really clear idea of what we wanted. We had a really awesome round of concept work from our team in uh, Weta FX in New Zealand, and we put that into previs where you roughly animate the scene and see if things are working, and then post viz where you then roughly take that animation and put it in once you've actually shot it. And we looked at it and we're like, well, this is just not scary enough. Well, and the funny thing about that particular, it isn't, uh, designing them is an, a, a, an evolving process. You, you pitch ideas, you try different things. We have talented artists who draw things up and we go, no, we don't like that, we like that, we don't like that. The initial versions of that, uh, the Ice Titan, um, uh, some of the feedback was it wasn't scary enough mm -hmm. and that we went back and actually the team kind of, roughed it up made yeah, it scarier and made yeah. it more terrifying and gave, made it more threatening and and uh, it, it's it's part of the fun of working in this world is that you you obviously have Godzilla who looks like Godzilla what Godzilla looks like but this opportunity to create things and make them as scary as we want them to be yeah and our, our brilliant VFX supervisor Sean Conrad has been a part of the MonsterVerse since 2014. You know, we would get these conceptual drawings and there would be ones that we would respond to aesthetically. And he would say like, yeah, it's gonna walk really stupid. And we're like, well, how do you mean? It looks so cool and creepy. And But then somebody would make the walk cycle and you'd have this ferocious, monstrous, awful thing going like, derp, derp, yeah. derp, derp, derp. Yeah. and it was like, oh, that's a practical. And, the anatomy and, wasn't right. Yeah, and Sean knew, Sean could could tell like, no, and we're, we need to make it like this and like that. And, and so we're like, okay, how do we make this thing scarier? And that's, you give it big teeth and have like drool coming off of its mouth and give it a little like, damage to its body and make it more aggressive and like you find a character and so that that you know the good thing is like the challenges are all, always the most rewarding parts and that's because of those challenges I think it's one of my favorite creatures we did. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. It was an education for us. Yes. I mean the same thing I think it sort of grew out of the environment you know that that we wanted we knew this adventure was going to take them to different places around the world one of the places was the sort of the the Alaskan tundra we shot on this incredible location on an actual glacier in British Columbia what kind of a creature would live in that world you know in in something how that, would it see how would it hunt what would it feed on right. and the idea of of a thing that would work underground not only kind of tied into some of the bigger you know uh, stories in the show but we you know it's dark it's cold there's no light and there's something hunting you underground you know we thought a lot about jaws you know about about how great it would be to have this this thing under the ground and they could hear the ice and the cracking and they could tell when it was they were being stalked but you couldn't necessarily see it the suspense it? comes from you know it's out there somewhere yeah you yeah. know but you but you don't know when it could pop up yeah it was it was it was a rather than have a story of people just running away from a big scary thing it turned it into a survival story Talking about the actors, when I saw the shot of Kurt Russell was turning around and matching his son's image on the wall, I got goosebumps. And so what was your most goosebump moment throughout the whole shooting process? I guess you must have more. Yes, many. Um, being in Tokyo and shooting a Godzilla, you know, Godzilla project in Tokyo where Godzilla was born, that was very special. And people running from Godzilla down the streets of Tokyo felt like movies that I had grown up watching. It was really incredible. Meeting Kurt Russell and Wyatt Russell for the first time and talking to them about creating this one character, that they would create this one character together, that was very special. The, uh, the show has so many for me. So how about visiting Toho for the first time? Yes, 
Doho was an incredible place to go. It really was a pilgrimage. They are an incredible partner and they were so welcoming to us when we got to Tokyo and we all got to take our picture with this bronze Godzilla statue in front of Toho and stand under the giant beautiful mural of the Seven Samurai and to know that you were standing on hollowed ground where Kurosawa had made films and where Godzilla had been born. That was very, that was very exciting. Mm, you shot in so many different real locations, snowy mountains, deserts, tropical islands in this series. And so what was the most challenging one for you? Each one would be challenging. I did not film, I was not the filmmaker for the Glacier episode, but I understand that was quite challenging. And I can imagine having worked um, in snowy environments and on frozen lakes, that's, that's super challenging. Um, for us, you know, uh, shooting on the streets of Tokyo was, 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 was a challenge just because that's such a vibrant, big big city and to try to create uh, you know, large scale dramatic scenes um, in such a busy city is always challenging. It's true when we work in New York, but Tokyo especially because it's such a, such a dense, vibrant city. Um, working in jungles is always hard, but yes, this show really jumped from continent to continent. You know, we were in British Columbia, we were in deserts, we were in glaciers, we were in Hawaii, we were in Tokyo. It's part of, I think, what makes the show feel authentic. Um, and adds to the filmmaking. And I'm sure there are tons of Easter eggs for fans to discover. Any particular one you're dying for the fans to notice? Yeah, I think one of the joys of the show is that if you are a fan, there will be lots of Easter eggs throughout and you will understand how these moments fit into the movies you love. And if you have never seen a monster movie, a MonsterVerse movie, you can still come into this show and love it and experience it without having any knowledge because our characters don't know about the world of the monsters and they're learning about it as they go. So there's something for diehard fans and there's something for new fans. Hello Taiwan, I hope you all enjoy watching the show on Apple TV Plus. We work so hard on the show, we love it, and we hope you love it too. Hi, hi Taiwan, uh, I, was at Ta I was in Taipei over Christmas and I love it there. Uh, and um, so, uh, and so uh, but yeah, hope you love the show, Apple TV Plus, November 17th. <laughs> Hope you love it too. I love it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. I wish we could talk more about less all the time I have. Hope we could see more seasons of this. Oh, we Thank hope you so, so too. Much. Thank you. Thank you.